Thank you everyone for joining today. I am super excited to have our guest speaker today. Um, today we are joined by Chris Monier from Open Door and of course, Chris Lee, our head of design at Sprig. And we're gonna talk about how one of our customers uses Sprig to supercharge their product development. Um, just to kick this off, um, I'm gonna do a round of introductions. I'm Ann Cantrell, um, head of content marketing here at Sprig. And I wanna pass it over to our guest, Chris Monier, to just talk through his background and his experience and give a little introduction. Yeah, I'm Chris. Uh, I, I work at Open Door. I've been there for about a year. Um, before that, uh, well, I can talk talk all about research in a little bit, but just really quickly before before Open Door, I was at this uh, climate tech company called Arcadia, uh, which where I worked with a designer who is now on Sprig. Uh, shout out to Ange, she's she's awesome. And uh, before that, I was at Airbnb for seven years. Before that, I was at various medical device companies. I can talk all about that if you really want. Uh, but uh, for the last like. 10 years, I guess, I've been really focused exclusively on, on research. Uh, and so my time at Open Door has been all about um, user research, particularly on one uh, one part of the company. I can also give a quick overview of, of Open Door if people don't know it. So Open Door is, uh, is a real estate marketplace. Their sort of first product, the core product of, of Open Door is a way for people that are selling their house to sell directly to Open Door and sort of bypass a lot of the typical pain points uh, like staging a house or uh, doing showings. Uh, you sell it directly to Open Door, and then they resell it. Um, so that's Open Door's like initial sort of core product. I'm on this uh, zero to one team within Open Door that's uh, focused on building sort of from scratch uh, a third party marketplace. So think like uh, like Airbnb for like real estate sort of uh, that type of idea where we will help uh, buyers and sellers sort of match up and facilitate the transaction. That's that's sort of what I'm working on right now. Cool. Thank you so much. And Chris Lee, if you could just give us a quick introduction into your background as well. Hey, my name is also Chris. Um, I lead our design team here at Sprig. Uh, my background is as a designer. Uh, previously, I worked on Google Chrome, and then I worked on Uber Eats, um, and I joined Sprig last year. Mostly here just to listen to the great stories that um, Chris Monier has to share and to chime in a little bit about how we view things at Sprig. Um, excited to hear from Chris. Thanks, Chris. We've decided to make this webinar as confusing as possible with similar <laughs> names. Uh, Chris Monier, um, if you could just, before we dive into, you know, how you use Sprig and the program at Open Door, um, if you could just tell us a little bit about like what attracted you to user research, why you picked it and, you know, what excites you about user research? Totally. I mean, Really, it was, it, I think, generally curiosity, but like specifically, it's like hearing unique stories from people. Uh, early, I, I used to be a mechanical engineer at one of the medical device companies I mentioned a long time ago. And uh, I, I had the opportunity to like, to participate in some research with like a, a design agency that was doing it. And it, it was amazing. Like we, we went into people's homes uh, and, and it was like people talking about like deep things like heart disease and really sort of meaningful stuff. And I was always blown away by like the, the, how every single person we talked to, no matter how, no matter what, no matter how many people we had talked to, like they always had such an interesting story. And that I just got hooked from that moment of like, just fascinating to talk to people and like learn about people's stories. Uh, sometimes rel related to the product that you're researching, sometimes it's just generally interesting to talk to people. But but I think that at, at the end of the day is like the thing that really sort of hooked me into research is just always hearing these like fascinating stories because everybody's interesting. It's it's amazing how interesting people are. So I think that's the the main thing. Yeah. That's uh yeah, so like just general curiosity about people and their stories. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then as you're doing research, like what are just some of the common pitfalls that you find or like problems that you've seen with like programs that have been set up? Or yeah. just like what are some of the things that like you you deal with day to day or you've seen over your course of your career? Yeah. So I mean, so I mentioned these like stories, and those are like those are like gold. And unfortunately you don't all, like all the stories are interesting, but you don't always get like the golden sort of nuggets of like, uh, that, that are actually helpful to like what you want to, uh, you know, the product changes you want to make or like the things you want to learn about people. So I think in, in like zooming way out, I think that's, that's the problem. Like how do you, how do you increase the, like, uh, the, the hit rate of like getting really good insights, right. From the people that you talk to. 
Um, so one part of that is just like finding the right people to talk to. Uh, that that's always hard. Um, and it's even beyond before that, you have to even find people to talk to in the first place. So I think just in general, like recruiting has is always like a, a tricky challenge. Um, it's uh and especially finding the, the the right people with like the right characteristics that are gonna like I said like sort of deliver on the like on the on the insights that you want to get. Um, mm -hmm. Our approach at Open Door, we can talk more about this later, is is like to sort of uh, sort of solve that through quality over quantity a little bit. Uh, just just interview a lot of people because uh, we also don't totally know exactly what we're we sort of don't know what we don't know. But uh, that's definitely one sort of sort of challenge is like just finding finding people to talk to, finding the right people to talk to, finding people to talk to quickly, like tomorrow or even today. Um, and so like uh, teeing this right up for, for a Sprig uh, endorsement, but Sprig actually helps with that, like directly, like literally last night I, I launched a Sprig survey because I'm like, I need to talk to some people uh, today uh, and got people to sign up. Uh, so that's that's one, it, it's it's always challenging and it's sort of like an arms race. You, you try to do, you try to find um, ways to get in front of people and then they eventually get desensitized to those things and you have to find other ways to get to people. But in general, I think it's always maybe one of the hardest things is just finding people, finding people to talk to and finding the right people to talk to. Yeah. I mean, we love that you're, you're going into a sprig endorsement, but before we dive into that too much, um, one of the things we want to talk about was just product market fit. Yeah. And how do we determine that? What does that look like? What does that just generally mean? Um, so just kind of like sound that set that groundwork, um, Chris M and Chris Lee, if you could just kind of talk through like what product market fit means to you and how you thought about that and determined that. Um, Chris Lee, if you want to kick it off for us and we can talk through. Um, sure. Um, I, I'll say personally, I've been fortunate to join a lot of companies when they are post product market fit. Like, you know, I joined Google Chrome when it was a majority web browser. I joined Uber Eats well after, you know, it had taken off. Um, so I have less on the ground experience thus far. And I'm really curious to hear about uh, from Chris about his experience working at Open Door on, you know, this new product. Where I've experienced it the most is, um, well, I guess first off, my understanding of product market fit, um, there's this point of like kind of, critical mass in uh, a product's life cycle where, you know, it get, gets this tipping point where like people just love it and their behavior is going to be uh, building on top of, uh, you know, there, there's enough momentum to sustain the product um, from then on out. And it's about growing it after that. But to get to that point beforehand, you really need to deeply understand like what are the needs that we're trying to meet for the user. And it's, it's at that stage, like fairly ambiguous. Um, I'll say for Sprig's history, also before my time, but uh, Ryan, our CEO, just recently shared on um, Lenny's newsletter a great story about um, how Sprig got the product market fit. And he did a lot of like early product discovery and would talk to a lot of our customers about how we were um, meeting this pain point that, you know, at the time wasn't really well, um, well solved for, which is um, kind of what... Chris is talking about, which is like, I'm building a product and I need to get feedback from my users really quickly. And I don't have time to go through like uh, a super long user research process. I, because I, I, I'm like trying to iterate, you know, super quickly, or maybe I have a brand new product. And um, I also have enough volume of, um, of usage in my products that I can like put up a, a survey in my product and I can get a lot of volume of people answering it or um, recruit people to talk to. And that's where we found early traction. And from then on, um, you know, Sprig has, uh, been well-loved by a lot of our customers since, but we recently, um, kind of are re-experiencing getting to product market fit with, uh, the new replay product that we just launched, which, um, you know, I'm going to talk about a little bit later, but you know, that's our, you know, brand new baby products. And, uh, we're revisiting this aspect of like, how do we make sure that it's, it's meeting product market fit now? Uh, so with that, I'll pass it off to Chris. Yeah, I love I love that, especially that that example uh, uh, from the early days of Sprig. Like one of the things I've learned. Uh, so I also was like at Airbnb, I was like their post product market fit. Uh, Arcadia was a little the previous job before this was a little bit more product market fitty, but I this job now at Open Door where I'm where it's very pre pre product market fit for Open Door exclusives. It's like marketplace. 
but it's I feel really lucky because I've been able to work with people that have gone through through the the journey of product market fit, various like you know, the founder of Open Door is working on this, uh, other founders of, of previous companies have now joined this initiative and it really have learned a lot from them on like how to think about it. One of the the coolest things, uh, shout out to uh, our head of product, uh, Ilian, who, who's who's awesome, is um, this like product market fit PMF. You have the P and you have the M. And you can, and they're, and they're both dynamic. You're both changing, right? And so the, the, the obvious one for me was always like changing the product. Oh, you, you have a, you have a market, whatever that is. You, you just have to like, and you have an a, initial idea for the product and you just have to like iterate on it until, until it works, until it clicks and then you're good. But, but it's actually both, right? You are iterating on the product, of course, like you don't know exactly what it's going to be, but you also have to like iterate on the market and figure and find the, the slice of people, the niche of people that for whom it's like, it makes the most sense to start with. It feel it felt like sort of the same idea with, as you're talking about like Sprig, finding these people that have a lot of traffic to their websites that want to do like these intercept surveys, like, uh, and, and then you go from there. But that initial like click is, it's like, I just I sort of think of it as like, like two circle, like a, like a dynamic Venn diagram. You have two circles and they're, they're like, uh, they're they're either big or they're really small. They're, so they're changing in size. They're shifting around, and every once in a while, like they overlap, and that's like the the product market fit. So you like you you're hoping for that Venn diagram of like a, enough of an overlap between two circles, one that's product, one that's market, and then eventually you you sort of get it, and you're like, wait, what what was the market? Who, who are those people that seem to like gravitate towards this product? And what was their product, by the way? And like, uh, how, okay, and then you you get an initial foothold, and then you sort of iterate either on the product and or the market, but, but it's, it's this very sort of dynamic uh, moving target type thing. Yeah. It sounds tricky. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, sure. So in terms of, you know, just diving into, to Sprig or then just maybe other products that you've used, uh, why Sprig? Like what, what have benefits have you found and how has that helped you determine product market fit, find respondents? Yeah. If you just talk through like a little bit of that. Yeah. I mean, I mentioned the the recruiting thing. Like, it's it's just always hard. Like, it, it's hard to, like, it's not, it's hard to find good people to talk to quickly. Like, you can always find people to talk to. It might just take a long time. And I feel like, sort of, if I think back to my time at Airbnb or like maybe pre COVID, pre like everything being on Zoom, like, mm -hmm. um, the expectation was like, was like that research would just take longer. It might take like a week or two weeks, and. Uh, it was rare to do remote research, which seems crazy, but like there were books written about the value of remote research. I was like, oh yeah, I guess it's a thing you can do if you really need to. But so much of the research would be like, bring people into the office or go on trips, which is awesome. But but it always would take like weeks maybe to do, um, to recruit people, you work with an agency and blah, 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 blah. Now it's like super, uh, I think one of the, one of the things that really, I, I think attracts me and, and I think Opendoor more generally to Sprig is this the 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 ability to find people really quickly? It could be for a survey, or it could be for like a screener survey that leads to an interview. But it's just so quick. One and then two, the fact that you can get like the exact people that you want to talk to, like people in the moment that are maybe on the exact page that you want to do research about, or mm -hmm. at least are are you know they're not just like random people, like they're they're your users. Um, so they probably have, uh, and sometimes you want to talk to people that are not your users, but a lot of times you want to talk to your existing users or at least people that are on your site. And so like, what better way to do that than just an intercept? Uh, and and the, I mean, the, I guess the other way is to like reach out with like emails and, and that type of thing, but the response rate is so low for that. And the, the response rate for Sprig, I mean, it's not, it's not amazing. Uh, it really depends on the audience. It's much better than email though. Like, so just as far as like bang for the buck type thing, like if we're gonna put stuff in front of people and like, you know, ask for their attention, it feels so much more effective to do it with Sprig and so much quicker. Um, or we can, like I said, like I launched a thing last night, I'm getting people that are signing up, uh, booking appointments, uh, tomorrow. Um, I, sometimes they even do it the same day. So I think that the speed of that is, is just so once you have it, you can't, uh, to me, that's like product market fit too. Like once you have that ability, I, ca I can't imagine going backwards to mean like, uh, I guess you can't, you, you have to wait a week <laughs> to talk to people. It sounds <laughs> crazy um so i I'm, I'm very much like hooked into this idea of just you want to talk to people just hit the button get the spring people coming and then you have people signing up yeah um yeah I, I love to hear that how it's like actually speeding up and changing the process of user research for you yeah. um i think this would be a great time to jump into uh some examples that we have and just show people how this actually works for you if you 
if I can pass that over to you, Chris. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so let me pull up my um, thing here. All right. Can you see my screen? Is it working? We can. If you want to hit. Uh, cool, cool. Yep. Um, all right. So uh, I have these. Oh, I'll go in this mode. Uh, so I have, uh, we have this deck, Sprig use cases. So uh, there's sort of three ways that, I, that I've been using Sprig uh, when it comes to research. The first two, I think are pretty obvious, pretty known. And the, the last one is the one that's um, maybe maybe a little more novel. So the first one is um, these like quick surveys uh, with, with cross-tab analysis. And you can get like really far with this. This is sort of, uh, this is what originally attracted me to Sprig maybe like a year ago. Um, just this idea that you have all these people constantly coming uh, to our website, and uh, what if we just we, we have we have lots of questions. We always have our, our whole team has a ton of questions. We're always wondering, so we we do these like little quick surveys, three to five questions, usually like closer to three. Um, with here's a couple of questions that we ask. For example, compared to your expectation, Open Door's preliminary offer price for your home. So again, Open Door the way it works, people come in, they they answer some questions about their home, they tell us their address. Open Door computes a preliminary offer. And the next step is then to refine that into a final offer. That's sort of the, the gist of it. Um, so what we found is by doing these surveys, we can, we can well, first we found that people tend to really like telling us how they feel about their offer, which is cool because we get a ton of engagement on, on these questions. And that in it, in it itself is a learning, just seeing which questions seem to resonate because that tells you what's on people's minds. But then um, the sort of this cross-tab analysis idea is you ask a few questions and then I just have a dummy graph over here because I can't share actual data. But, um, you know, you can sort of see like, oh, the, the clusters of like, if people tend to, um, if, if they feel their, their offer is sort of what they were expecting or greater, they cluster into this group. Uh, and, and if it's lower than expected, they cluster in this group. And then you can see it in the, in the other questions. So this is like, this is pretty basic. It's just like, download this Sprig CSV, do a pivot table and then make a graph. But it's really, it can be very illuminating. Uh, and it's so quick. Like you can, I can do this in like a day or two where like sort of immediately answers a question that the team has or uh, brings inspiration to like chase something else further. Like we have a hunch and we sort of can can sort of validate or invalidate the hunch really, really quickly with these like super quick surveys. Um, does that make sense? Any, any questions there? Otherwise I can go to the next one. Um, okay, there's no question. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll pause, I'll send over your questions afterwards. Cool. All right, cool. Yeah, we can get through this whole thing. And then uh, the other one, the, is another obvious one I've been talking about, raving about this forever is these interview recruiting ones. Uh, you can see again, just a couple example questions here. The we, What we found again is this, when you ask people about their open door preliminary offer, it tends to give really, really high response rates. So that in and of itself is a learning, but then we just learned that if we ask that question, we can we can sort of hook a lot of people into into the sort of the recruiting funnel. Uh, and then, so it's like that, that's the first question. And then we say, Hey, do you want to do a 45 minute interview, a 30 minute interview, 15 minute interview, whatever the right thing is. We put the, the money in there. This is just sort of a dummy one. And then, uh, and then there's a link to book a time in this case. And then over here, um, uh, on the right is sort of my Google appointment thing. Sometimes use that, sometimes use Calendly. It doesn't really matter, but it, it, what's great is it just automates the entire process. So I just have these sprig surveys, just like sort of ready to go whenever I need to, I can just hit launch in Sprig and they're just, they showed up to people. And then like my calendar just starts filling up with people. It's like, it's great because it's so automated and so quick um, and allows you to like, you can sort of use these questions to screen people. In this case, I'm not really screening much, but but I've, I've definitely done that to like find people that are in certain uh, situations and, and we want to talk to those people and that type of thing. And that's the second big use case. Yeah, go ahead. Do you have any sense of like before and after, like how many respondents you've been able to get as compared to in the past? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, it's really just a function of like how many people we blast this to and mm -hmm. how for how long we leave it up. But um, so we could get, I mean, I think I think it may be a better thing is like how quick we can get people. Um, yeah. So like I can, we can turn in the survey uh, and you know, depending again how how much we blast it to, we can we can start getting people within like I don't know thirty minutes to like start filling up slots. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, maybe we want to move really aggressively. We'll show it to a lot of people because we want interviews like today. So right, we we have to really turn it turn up the dial to show it to a lot of people because we know there's like oh, obviously there's a funnel going on here. Not everybody that answers the first question actually signs up for an interview. Um, but but it 
it's, it's really easy to do that. Uh, or maybe if we have a little more lead time, we, we don't have to show it to so many people, but um, it, it it's the quickest way that I'm aware of to recruit people um, quicker than email, definitely quicker than, I don't know, other methods, uh, even, even reaching directly out to our customers. Cause we have the ability to, you know, to do that, whether it's through email or text, that mm -hmm. tends to not even be as quick or, or cold calling, which nobody wants to do, but that's not even, that's like worse than I think this. Cause in this case, you're finding people that that have time and they're, they're choosing a time that works for them because they're booking the time. Um, and sometimes I'll even put like, like in this example here, do you have, uh, would you like to schedule a 45 minute research call for tomorrow? Or maybe I'll say this afternoon or later this week or whatever it is. So you're, you're sort of getting people that you know can can meet the times that you're available. Yeah. Um, just, I want to, we have one quick question in the chat that I want to direct towards you since it's related to this one. Um, read the tomorrow emphasis. Do you find that specificity increases sign up rates or is it more about your internal need to move quickly? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, and I, I hate having to capitalize it, but like maybe the sprint people can like make it possible to put bold. <laughs> or <laughs> <attempts or something. laughs> but uh, I, I really wanted to like call people's attention to tomorrow. So it sounds like I'm shouting at them, but um, I, I, I don't think, know if it increases response rates i think it's really of like trying to be as respectful as we can to the to the users so that to not sort of get their hopes of, oh yeah 45 minutes yeah perfect hundred dollars it sounds like I, you know i could be and then they click the the calendar and then they see that oh it's for today or tomorrow like yeah there's no way i can do that so it's a little bit more about setting expectations for people um if anything it probably decreases the response rates but i'd rather have that i'd rather have people like not like sort of drop out of the funnel there than like sort of clicking through and then realizing it's not for them. So I don't always put that time thing in there. It's more of like, if I really need it, um, really just to set expectations with, for people. I guess, Chris, I I don't know if this is what the question is getting at, but I'm curious, like, would would you have alternatively considered saying like, would you like to book a, uh, a interview in the next week? What, or... It, it, oh, like, that's a good point. Tomorrow things to particularly come from. I don't, I don't know. I haven't tried that. Like sort of, providing a little more certainty to the ask and maybe that helps increase response rates. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a good question. Um, I, I will. I mean, oh, go ahead. I, I've heard about this use case um, for yeah. Sprig of like getting real time interviews scheduled for like the next day or even the same day, like quite a few times. And um, it. Is that just Chris? me or did we lose Chris? <laughs> did we lose Chris Lee for a second? We might have. No, it looks like he dropped off. All right. Um, we'll never know what that question was. Hopefully it comes back. <laughs> hey, Chris, you dropped off at the end of your uh, your question there. Even like updated or something. Um, but <laughs> okay. I mean, like, yeah, I think it's a testament to something that you can do uniquely with Sprig to like recruit for interviews, same day, next day. Yeah. Totally. Um, cool. And I, Chris, I think you have one more. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Oh, right here. So this, this is the one that I'm sort of, uh, most excited about just cause it's the newest one. So for the last, like maybe a month or two on our team, again, this like little team within the zero to one team within open door, um, for open door exclusives, we've been doing this Simulated user experience, maybe a better way to put, to, to think about this is like a prototype, prototyping the customer experience. So like the customer journey. So, so, okay. So I, I briefly explained it. So I'll just reiterate. So the, the open door, pro, like if I'm a seller and I, if I'm a, a person that owns a house, I'm going to sell my house to open door. I come to the open door website, I type in my address and then I answer a bunch of questions. I see some screens and then I have to talk to someone at open door. So if you, if you just sort of abstract that out a little bit, that's basically what Sprig is offering. Like Sprig allows you to answer some questions. You can see information. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's not the same type of information we might display in Opendoor, but whatever. Uh, and then you can kick people to a call through Calendly or whatever. So it's almost the same. The, the, the sort of primitives of the Opendoor experience are pretty much the same as what Sprig offers, or at least good enough for us. So on, on, on our little zero to one team, what we've been doing it because it's so important to move fast. We, we, we're, we're just constantly trying to move as fast as we can. Mm -hmm. And so this is a way to, for us to sort of uh, ask these simulated questions. Um, uh, and like in this case, we're, we're asking again, 
because we saw so much engagement around this question, we're like, well, what if we just put that question in the actual onboarding? We don't currently do that, but what if we did something like that? So then we just tried to pilot that through Sprig where we, we pick a really small geographic area uh, and we just turn this up to like 100% of people. So like everybody sees it or maybe 50% just to sort of make sure we're not breaking everything. Uh, but essentially this becomes the user experience for like some small sort of group of people. Um, where they're, they're seeing the Sprig question. And especially like on mobile, it doesn't even feel, it feels a little different than the open door flow. I mean, it's obviously it's like different fonts and stuff like that, but it's like close enough for us. We're like good enough. It helps us move fast. And so what we, we sort of do is we sort of intercept people with Sprig and then put them down in like a different, almost like a different path. I didn't put all the questions here, but you know, we've done it with like four or five different questions. And then we ask for their phone number or we have them book uh, a Calendly link, which is sort of this, and that, that basically leads them to the same people they would talk to if they went through the, the regular open door flow. But then we've set up these, uh, so we have our ops people, our amazing ops people who are sort of also participating in this pilot. And so they know if someone comes from Sprig to give them like a different script or try a different pitch or try like a different set of value props. It's sort of is a different conversation. So what we're doing is prototyping like sort of the next trying different ways, different customer experiences out. And then, and most of them aren't good and some of them are. And then the ones that are good, whether it's the questions that we put in, in to the sprig on the screen uh, or the actual like, conversations that our op, ops people are having, the people that talk to the actual sellers, th those become the next, like the next iteration of the product uh, of the, both the, the digital experience and the, like the, the conversation experience. Uh, and so this has been, this is like really, become like how we work now um, or we're, we're, we're because we can move so quickly, like we can hatch an idea up in the morning and then like an hour later, it we have changed the user experience for like some small group of people. And, and it just, it's so much quicker almost by definition than like, you know, redesigning our current screens and rebuilding them with engineers. This is literally just typing stuff. Um, so it's so much more quicker and it allows us to try all these different things and get it just enough of the signal to know to know whether it's worth further investment from our designers and engineers to actually build the thing and our ops people before we like pivot the whole team. It's not even a huge team, but like, you know, rather than pivoting the whole team to do this and then try this and then try that, we're able to just like a, a few of us are able to try little little things and see if it works and if it works then we can we can expand the, the effort if it, ho hopefully that makes sense this is super fascinating i i have not heard of this one before but um i i, I guess the the general point about sprig that um i think is coming out here is is the ease of using the ad, the admin interface for whoever to like set up uh, and wire like the set of questions that goes in here um it's really interesting how you're making use of it for this sort of like novel um, and also like operations heavy workflow here. Yeah, cool. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, like one one other thing to add maybe is just uh, this is more for the for the researchers out there. Like um, the, the one, I think one of the reasons why I really, as a researcher, really like this is that it usually as a researcher you're sort of like one sort of step removed from, you don't build anything. <laughs> the designers do the work and do the designs. The engineers actually build the thing. All you as a researcher can do usually is come up with ideas and, and insights and try to influence people. And, and that's great. I love it. And that's why I am a researcher, but this is really cool. Cause you can actually like, I can now, now I just a regular old researcher can like in, influence the, the, the actual experience that people see. Uh, and, and it's not just me. It's like a, a team of us that, that are doing this, but, but it, it's, it's like the, closest I as a researcher have ever ex experienced of, of actually like literally changing the product and not just coming up with recommendations to change it. This leads, of course, to recommendations to change the actual product. But for, you know, because we're actually changing the experience, it's 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 sort of, it's like, like I said, the closest you can get as a researcher to like, to actually changing the uh, the user experience for people. So, so I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's super fascinating. And I don't think something that we for saw that the like, people were using Sprig for, but it's really interesting um, hack and, and use of uh, Sprig. Um, <laughs> I want to pause for a couple questions that we have. Um, first, uh, in terms of contacts, are quick surveys the same as intercept surveys that you would display on your site? 
Yeah, I think, and it's just clarification. So yes, that, I think the answer is yes. Like this one, quick surveys, yeah, intercept surveys, like things that just show up. I, I say quick surveys because it's like, in contrast to like a, 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 like a longer, like a 10 minute survey that you might use like a dedicated survey platform mm -hmm. to do, like that's like a, almost like a different type of use case. You know, if you want to get really rich insights about a specific topic or whatever it is, Sprig's not the best fit for that. Like it's like you're getting people and you're not paying these people. Like for that type of survey, you might want to actually incentivize people, give them some money or whatever. For Sprig, it's usually just a quick, like two minute exercise. People are doing it be usually because they're interested, I think, as we found with this question. So anyway, long-winded answer to, uh, yes, quick surveys are the same as intercept surveys. Hey, I'll uh, kind of relate to that. Um, Chris, could you give us the context about like for this survey that's on the screen that you're showing, like when is it showing? Like, you know, something with Sprig yeah. is like you just put targeting based on an interaction with the product. Like, so when are you showing this one? Good, yeah, great question. So this this particular survey is shown to uh, sellers. So open door, we have buyers, we have sellers. So this is like going being exposed to sellers on like their dashboard. So after they, after they answer all these questions, um, then they, uh, they land on like this dashboard, which has like their like preliminary estimate. This is showing up on that, on that page. So the, oh, this, I forgot to mention that. So everybody that sees a survey is logged in, which is, which is really great because, because of, um, I, I don't know if this is like standard for Sprig, but at least at open door, um, the way our engineers have like integrated Sprig is, is via segment or, or whatever. There's some integration between Sprig and segment. I, I don't know how it works, but I know that it works and it's awesome because every every response to these to these questions is linked to segment data. So we have, in other words, we have like user ID flowing through because all these people are logged in. So we can then sort of look at what people, how people answer these questions and you know all the other stuff that our internal data tells us. Um, so yeah, no, I'm, I can't remember what the original question was, but I, I wanted to mention that because it's really, uh, I didn't even realize that for a while that we even had that capability. And then like I, I realized that Sprig just carries user ID with it. Um, it's all anonymized of course, but um, it's uh, that's been really, really helpful for these types of surveys. Yeah, and for the audience, if you're not familiar, um, segment is one of the installation methods that we offer at Sprig where you can like install Sprig faster. You know, if, if you don't have segment available, um, let's well, offer Google Tag Manager, but you can also like use a, a JavaScript SDK. But if you do have something like segment already, it has um, like, it, it, it acts as like a centralized place to evolve your user data. And so that data just flows naturally into Sprig. You install faster, but you can also, as Chris is saying, like trace uh, the user IDs through and kind of correlate the data from Sprig with other, um, other you know, inputs into your user data. Um, and one last question before we move on. Um, how do you know when you have achieved product market fit in the context of a zero to one product? Are metrics defined ahead of time to determine when you achieve this? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, uh, I, well, I can I can take a step first just because I started talking. But um, uh, yes, we always have metrics that we define uh, and we always change the metrics as we learn more about like what we actually care about. Like, so it's it's always it's sort of this like you, sort of you don't know what you don't know type thing. Like, what even is like uh, what does product market fit look like for us? And and it sort of it's like this moving target. Like I said, it's like these circles that are moving around and you're trying to get the Venn diagram overlap. So you make your best sort of educated guess, I guess, at what the metrics are, and you and they're sort of grounded in reality and, and based on previous experience. So we we always have metrics, but like um, that doesn't mean that they're like oh, all we have to do is like meet the metric and then product market fit. Like usually, usually it's like as we as we sort of attempt to achieve a given metric, we'll learn other things and and realize oh, actually there there's this other metric that's maybe more important. Uh, and then you go down a given path and, and you pursue those metrics and you realize uh, that's not quite going to give us what we want. I think what we real, really need to do is, is if we go after this metric, just to put it in metric terms, then I think that will be more meaningful. So, and it's also like this um, sort of, it's not just purely quantitative, like, you know, like if, if the five metrics are all green, then product market fit achieved. It's, it's a, it's a both quantitative thing, but also a qualitative like feeling like when you're talking to people, 
I don't know if you read all the all the things, all the people that have pontificated on product market fit. It's sort of like you know when you when you see it, but or when you feel it, but it's it's really hard to like articulate. And I think that's continues to be true. Like metrics are super helpful, and you have to have the metrics because otherwise, how do you even know what you're doing? But um, but I think what we're looking for to 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 know whether we've achieved product market fit uh, is is both metrics move like meeting some like criteria, but also like just this like feeling of like, oh, we know, we know sellers are coming to us. We know buyers are coming to us there. Mm-hmm. And and it's like, this could be a whole other like sort of uh, talk of like how to, how to detect product market fit in like qualitative interviews. But like, like one quick thing is like when people like what, what I love is when we sort of will describe a concept in, a, in an interview, or, or maybe we'll talk to a, a person that, that is already using our product. And if at the end of the conversation, they say, they say something like, wait, how can I get this? Or like, when is this coming out? Cause sometimes it's like, we're talking to people that haven't seen it yet. And that's always a good sign if people are like reaching for it, even, yeah. even without being prompted. So e- that's what I mean. It's like sort of these qualitative signals that you're looking for in addition to, to the metrics. Um, but I, I don't think it's either one or the other. I think you need both. Yeah. Makes sense. So it's a mix of the two. Yeah. Um, cool. Thank you so much, Chris, for walking us through this. It's really exciting to see how customers are using Sprig and also, you know, thinking of fascinating ways to reproduce their own product experience uh, using Sprig. Um, so with that, I want to pass it over to Chris Lee, who's going to talk us through um, Sprig, but then, as we mentioned, our newest baby replays. Um, Chris, you want to take it over? Yep, let's get that started. Um, so yeah, thank you to Chris Monnier for sharing a bit about how the Open Door t- team uses Sprig. Um, I'm going to speak a bit about more about Sprig generally, as well as a couple of our recent releases. Um, so um, we've been talking a lot about Sprig so far, but you know, for those on the call, you might have varying levels of familiarity with it. Um, Sprig, if you're not familiar. We're a platform for um, product teams to just get rapid targeted insights about your product experience and really about how users are using your products. Um, there's a few different products that go into Sprig. Our core bread and butter, which Chris has been speaking about, is surveys. We recently launched replays. Um, you can also run design prototype tests in Sprig. And lastly, um, we are increasingly integrating AI to provide analysis to get you started in making decisions with your data. Um, Everything in Sprig starts with targeting. So we just talked through that with uh, Chris's example about um, at Open Door, you know, they provide this um, the survey to users right when they, uh, the sellers have uh, gotten their first offer. And so what you do is uh, precisely target the exact moment in the user experience that you're interested in learning. So in this example, say we're a, a, a stock investing platform, you might target when the user first uh, does their first stock purchase and you can get at that exact moment, their impressions of that user experience. Um, and you can filter to the segment of users you're interested in based on user attributes. As we talked about, um, you can set that all up using our SDK, or you can integrate using an existing tool you might have, like Segment or Google Tag Manager. Um, what you get out of Sprig once you've set that up, you can run surveys embedded in your website or app. It uh, gets high quality target information because you're just specifying that precise moment in time. And we see a fairly high response rate, um, as Chris said, compared to um, you know alternatives that you might consider like email surveys. You can also run design prototype tests in Sprig. So this is great for if you have something that is pre-launched products, but you have, say, like a, a design prototype built in something like Figma. Um, you can pair it with a set of questions. You can specify the tasks that users are to complete. And what you get back is a link um, of your questions or example tasks paired with the prototype. And you can display that in product. You can display it via a link. You can even um, share it with a panel. We have an integration with the user interviews panel. Um, and uh, unlike some of the other alternatives in the market, doesn't require any installs uh, for the end user. So that also results in higher response rates. 
And lastly, we just launched the replay product. So this allows you to watch your users uh, actually interact with your product and you get back this video recording um, of what they're doing. You can hide sensitive information as you need so that you're not exposing anything private for the user. Um, and I'm gonna talk about how you can combine replays and surveys, which we think is super powerful. So next I'm gonna go into a deep dive on two, actually three of our recent product releases um, and uh, show you what those look like a bit more precisely. So first up, how can you use surveys and AI analysis together? So this will give you a visual about like the Sprig admin interface that Chris has been talking about. We aim to make it super easy for anyone on the team to get started setting up um, a survey. So, you know, you might be an experienced researcher and you know what questions you're going to ask, but you might be a beginner and you need some inspiration. And for that, we have over 80 different sort of templates for all sorts of different use cases. Um, you know, you can see here journey-based surveys or recruiting prompts like Chris was talking about. Um, and so I might select creating a new survey and then go in and add some questions here about uh, my signup experience. And here I can, you know, I can add in the questions easily, drag and drop them around as I need. Um, and then the next thing I would do is tar set up the targeting for when this survey is going to display. And again, I can add in pre precisely the events and uh, filter down to specific types of users, for example, based on language or um, Chris kind of alluded to the use case of like geography. Um, yeah, a bunch of different use cases depending on what you need. And then um, as I get back responses, the results experience looks roughly like this. And particularly, I want to focus you on, um, you know, there's a variety of different questions you can ask in Sprig, but one of them is these open text responses, um, which are really great for getting more fine-grained information about, like, what are users' suggestions of how we could make uh, signing up for this product easier. But the challenge of open text responses usually is you have to spend lots of time going through and categorizing them to get insights. So one of the applications of AI that Sprig has had for a little while is um, to automatically group these open text responses into themes. So here you can see I get back uh, the theme label as well as short description, and I can see the, the count of users for each one. From here, I can click in and dive deeper into the exact responses. So this provides me like a a first draft analysis of the takeaways, and I can always dig deeper into the, the raw data. Um, okay, so that's that's open text response level AI analysis and the survey making experience, but I also wanna show you how um, we're continuing to improve on the survey experience and AI analysis. Uh, so we just recently released this, this new iteration of it um, just a couple of weeks ago, in fact. And so, um, you know, going back into creating a survey here, I might create a different survey. Um, let's say this one's about, I want to understand the competitive landscape of my investing application and other ones. And so I have the starting question that's like, what's your age? And maybe I have a hypothesis that um, the preference of competitor varies based on age. So I'm going to name a few different competitors here and ask the user about their familiarity with them. When I get back the responses, um, see, you know, I have this initial question about your age. This is a multi, multiple select question now, uh, or multiple choice question. And you'll notice this new element on the right side. Um, this is what we just recently launched. This is called um, the AI analysis for surveys. So it takes in consideration the context of your entire survey, all five of those questions they, they ask, and it can see find the top takeaways across the whole survey, first off. So you, you have a place to start. And you can also ask it um, follow-up questions, including ones that trace the patterns of, um, in, uh, of correlations across different questions. So uh, for example, I could ask, does age impact choice investing app? And I get back, um, yes, it does actually. Your product is more popular with younger users while competitors more popular among older users. This would give me um, some impetus to investigate, you know, how can I uh, appeal to that older user demographic more? And, um, you know, Chris also spoke about this, this sort of like cross-tab analysis use case. Um, users have been able to do this in Sprig for a while using, um, we always allow you to export a CSV of your data and you can take it into like a spreadsheet um, and create all the charts and graphs that you want. Increasingly, we're trying to bring in more of that powerful analysis capability into Sprig directly. So 
Um, you can now do this in Sprig. You can also um, filter down based on answer questions directly in Sprig. So introducing more powerful analysis capabilities directly in the product. Lastly, I want to um, talk about Replay. This is our brand new product that is actually just launching in a couple of weeks. It's been in beta for a little while as we gradually improved it with um, you know, a small group of customers. Um, how Replay works, back on that uh, new study page. So I can click new Replay. Um, oh, actually, one sec. I would click new survey here. And what I want to show you first is same survey investing out competitive landscape. When I go over to set the targeting, um, there's actually this card here where you can add a replay to a survey. And so um, along with running that survey, you can record uh, replay clips with the study. You can specify um, based on whatever target that you've already set. So I set this survey to, to trigger when um, on sign up. I can say, for the one minute before the study displays or before and after the study displays. I want to record that time around when the user is interacting with the study. And what I would get back, um, once I go to this um, results page and the responses come in, you'll notice now I have this watch button here. And so I can say, um, I'm really interested in finding out about uh, the experience of users who are on the older side in this, um, in this question. And I click that. And I would get back something like this, um, list to all the users who meet this segment on the left. And I can click through the different recordings, clips of um, their interaction with the products. Um, and I can correlate the information that they supply on the survey with what they were actually doing. So we think this is super powerful, allows you to get a holistic view of what users are doing and what they're saying. Um, in addition, you can also run a replay separately, so without a survey. This is really great if, um, you know, we think surveys are great, but you don't want to constantly be sharing a survey to a user um, all the time, right? It does kind of impact your end user experience. And so a separate standalone replay is a great way to get you insights about your users without having to expose a survey to the user. It's totally invisible to the user. So you'd hit new re replay here. And from here, you can specify the um, the targeting events without a survey, and you get back something like this. Um, for, so I want to record every time people interact with the, the stock information charts I have in the app. And I get back a table of all the different users who interact with it, um, and I can filter down like what are the relevant clips that I want to watch from here. Um, so that's it. Um, Want to just uh, end in recapping, we went over the Sprig products. We are a user platform, uh, or we're a platform for understanding your users better and making better product decisions and doing so quickly. Um, I went through a couple of our features around AI analysis and surveys. So AI analysis for open text questions and AI analysis for the whole survey, both available now. This one was just released, so I encourage you to check it out. And then launching in just a couple weeks is the Product, which we're super excited about. Um, please tune back in and check that out. So that's it. Um, we'll end in any additional questions from the audience around Sprig. Thanks, Chris. Um, we do have a couple questions. Um, how would replays be different than what I might find in Google Analytics? Yeah, so kind of complimentary. Um, tools like Google Analytics give you the um, the events usage data. Um, well, really, actually, tools exactly like Google Analytics aren't really based on events. They're based on um, interaction with pages. Um, but you know, the the class of analytics tools um, kind of meet that ability to uh, see how much people are clicking on certain events, performing certain interaction. What Replay does uniquely is gives you a video recording of what people are doing. So you can actually see yourself what's happening for an individual user and uh, gives you a bit more of a holistic view of like what they're doing. Thanks. And then one last question before we wrap up, can we use Sprig AI on an old completed survey? Yes, um, you can. So uh, this open text question feature has been available for quite a while. You we're able to use that for a little while. Um, the survey level AI feature just recently released. 
um, but should be available for completed surveys as well. Thanks so much. Um, well, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you to Chris Monier and Chris Lee. Um, and yeah, I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Thank you so much, everyone. And thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Bye. Thanks. Bye.